What an absolute stunning morning. I absolutely love it in here. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. We're not far from uh, sun up. It's not been up that long, but uh, the birds are out. It's a beautiful, fresh morning. So as I'm walking through the forest, any resources I pass, like this birch tree, this downy birch, I'm going to get a few of them resources because I know I'm going to be making a fire after. And uh, it'd be crazy to walk straight past something like this. It's a readily available resource and it takes me about a couple of minutes to get something that's going to make my life easier later on. So we're going to showcase a couple of skills today, being the bow drill and a couple of snows, aren't we Billy, eh? Yeah! So, thanks for joining me. So, bow drill wise, this is one I made last week, so if you want a horse and you're looking at, I'd say, no thicker than an inch, you could go inch and a half, I mean you're going to get plenty of fires out of something that's relatively thick within reason but uh, I try to keep mine down to about an inch so this one's willow I tend to go for willow on willow or well you can use you can use many many woods uh, the key is to having the same the same wood really for the uh, half and the spindle the majority of the time other woods will work if they're of the same sort of uh, consistency what you don't want is a really hard wood and a soft wood because your soft wood's going to burn up before it does anything with the hardwood. So you want you want equal sort of consistencies of the woods. So for this one, I'm going to use a, I'm going to use a hazel spindle. So with the spindle, you want to, one end that's going to give you minimal friction. So you want a pointed end, a bit like a, a bit like a pencil. So you can always put some leaves in. Uh, in the, the top of it etc to make it a little bit more uh, less friction if you will a little so it spins easier but I mean you've just got to be careful of the leaves dropping down on your ember etc if, if they're a little bit damp but uh, and then we want one end that's quite blunt that's going to give us as much friction as possible so yeah so this is a hazel spindle and then uh, I'm going to make a bow in a minute, so you want your bow to be roughly that finger pit, fingertips to armpits at a good sort of size. And uh, it doesn't matter, they can have a little bit of spring in them, but I prefer my bows not to be too springy. A little bit's nice, just for when you're getting your cord wrapped around your spindle. And uh, you've got a little bit of give there. But uh, yeah, and then basically. We want a little bit of cordage, you can use natural fibres etc, it's always a lot harder using natural fibres but they work, uh, nettle cordage, willow, uh, I've used cleavers before, they work quite well, and cleavers are pretty quick, you know depending what time of year it is, no good this time of year, unless you can find some of last years, but at the end of the season when they're dying off, cleavers are brilliant. So. Other than that, we want something to apply pressure to the spindle, downward pressure. This is an old bit of oak from years ago that I used on its own for years. I've stuck uh, a limpet shell in there with a little bit of pine pitch, etc. So that works really well with a limpet shell. But it worked pretty good on its own. Sometimes I just put a few little leaves in it and what have you. Some, some give it a bit more moisture so it will spin nice and easy. But that, that works really well. And then something just to catch your ember. Yeah, put that underneath to catch your ember, so it's not getting on the damp ground. And uh, so other than that, we need a really nice tinder bundle now. It's all about preparation. When it comes to primitive fire skills, well any fire skills, 
you want to succeed first time what you don't want to do is start off and then burn your bundle or whatever without having the ability to take it into a fire because that's the objective at the end of the day is getting a fire it's not about getting an ember it's not about getting those first little flames it's about consolidating that fire to keep us warm to cook to give us light to give us heat etc etc so i'm going to go and i'm going to get myself a tinder bundle together and uh, and we're going to crank this ball drill fire up to give myself as much potential for success as well i'm going to knock a few feather sticks up yeah so not only am i going to have this nice tinder bundle but i'm also going to have a good pile of feather sticks or at least one really good feather stick and i mean you can even instead of having that tinder bundle i could even just have a pile of feather sticks and these will work well you can find dry dry wood like this and you get some good feathers and then some fine feathers to finish it off they work brilliant yeah the key with the feather stick is to have one your fire all in one, all encased in one. So you end up with your fine tinder, your coarse tinder, and then your kindling as well in one stick. So you're going to have little feathers, big feathers, slightly bigger feathers, and then the rest of the stick which will burn, which will be your kindling. And then you can put your other bits on as well. So the little midges are on for them. I'm ready to get this fire going. So bun tinder bundle wise, I've got some dry grass, nice to find some dry grass on the way in. So, and there's a bit of uh, lime bark here. So, I need to rough that up, really rough it up. The same with that grass. Get it, in, get it into a tiny, I mean, it's, it's not going to take a spark like that, but if we really rough it up, get it ripped up. Get it, you want to get it ripped up as coarse as possible. I'm going to screw it up into a tiny little ball as best I can. I'm compressing it and then just breaking it up, really teasing it apart. I mean, even so, with a ferrocerium rod or any other method, but especially with ball drill, friction fire type stuff, where you're just going to get that ember. We want some really fine. Fine little cottony strands of bark and grass. Whoa, Billy's disappearing with one piece of me firewood. I've just set it up here. I've got a fire bundle. That's going to go on straight away. That's me tiny little bits. Me matchstick size stuff. And then after that, I've got me uh, pencil size stuff. And then me finger size stuff. And then me thumb size stuff. So you've got to be prepped and ready to rock and roll. It's worth taking the time to get all that stuff ready and next to you. And then you're right, then as soon as you've got that ember and you're away, you're laughing. Get myself a nice space to work. What I don't want to be doing is catching stuff with me uh, with my bow pulling it into my work area so you want a nice area around you so I'm not going to go too mad initially because like I say that's just warming it up and I'm ready to get a fire going with these little midges the fire will keep them away <laughs> so I'm just going steady now just nice and slow Nice and slow, just to get it warmed up a little bit. Nice and slow, not much pressure. You can wrap my arm round my knee if I want, round the other side of my leg, but I'm not too bad at the minute while well, I'm just warming it up. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it, I'm just holding it down. Just let it warm up. Smoking already.
Getting eaten alive by midges though. Give it loads of power. Loads of speed, loads of friction. Smoking a cigar, that. Ooh. I want to get some oxygen in there. Let a bit of oxygen get to it. Same as any fire, you need oxygen, fuel, heat, and oxygen to that ember. Starting to take shape now. There, you can just see it's starting to take shape. Just starting to glow a little bit, isn't it? Beautiful. See that smoke coming off it now. There's always something special about that. Fantastic. So now we've got to be careful with that ember. So let's get with a bundle. What I don't want to do is drop my ember en route. So there we are, we've got our ember and our bundle, ready to rock and roll. I'm just going to gently put that ember in there, that's it. Still let a bit of air get to it. Now there's two ways you can blow this. You'll have we'll all seen the uh, archetypal photograph where someone's blowing it to fire. Or you can waft it, which is what I tend to like to do. Just seems to get more of a consistent uh, heat as opposed to blowing. So I'll just open it up a bit. And in some ways, you're not blowing any moisture on it then either. I can see it's starting to glow. Oh, lovely. That'll be going in a second, that. Let's go for that big shot. There we are. We have fire, so I'll get that on my fire, but on my fire now, and we're ready to rock and roll. Yeah, get this spread out. Get me a nice bundle of small stuff. Leaving plenty of gap. Fire likes a bit of chaos. Wants gaps for the air to get through. So we're away. Get some good bits of hardwood on. These are fantastic for your cooking embers. Cheers. Now if we need to catch meat, we're going to need some sort of trap, some sort of snare, yeah? So we're not, uh, we're sort of passive hunting, yeah? So if we can set traps, that means we're hunting while we're in with shelter, while we're making cordage, while we're uh, keeping warm, while we're sheltering from the weather, while we're sleeping, while we're fishing, yeah? So it's... Fantastic, it's great to go out hunting with a bow, etc., with a spear, whatever you're hunting with, at lateral, etc., but uh, gun, etc. But if you can have traps as well in a survival situation, it, you're at a massive advantage because, like I say, you're doubling up on your time, you're passive, you're hunting while you're doing something else. So you're getting double, you're getting two for one. 
So I always have a bit of wire in my pocket. Yeah, I have a little survival kit in my pocket and there's, there's various things in there, a ferro rod, a lighter, a uh, bit of uh, paracord, some fishing hooks, a bit of snare wire, a few other bits and pieces. But the wire comes in, fan, comes in really handy, but for trapping, it makes life so much easier. You can make traps with paracord, you can take the insides out of the paracord, etc. And they work, they're just a little bit more finicky to get right with wire. It sort of holds itself in position. It's pretty hard to break it if it's a decent strength of wire. It's so easy and so quick to make traps. So, dead easy. Piece of wire. Length of my arm again, ish. So, that's a decent length. So depending on the ground, you're gonna need a, you're gonna need a stake. This is an easy way of doing it. A nice stake. So a piece of a nice stake like this. This is quite long. The ground's quite soft in here. Last thing you want is for your animal to get trapped and then pull the stake out of the ground and disappear injured into the forest. You've lost your animal. It's gonna die in pain somewhere in the forest, and and you're not gonna get the meat out of it. So you killed it for no need, then, haven't you? So get yourself a stake. Short from one end. Yep, this is the end that's going to go in the ground. I mean, I'll be planning on using this stake over and over again, so I'm going to hammer this in the ground. So I'm just going to chamfer this end. Simply so it won't split when I hammer it in the ground. Because my plan will be to constantly be resetting this. Yeah, defending what sort of tools you've got. What I like to do, Swiss Army knife, and I've got an awl, or you might have uh, a multi-tool with one of these on. I'm going to drill a hole through. Just means it's going to be really secure when I put this trap in place. Nice hole drilled through there. I've put a loop on one end of my wire. Just going to make a noose, dead simple, like you would. Yeah, put that through there. And I'm going through this stake with my wire. And I'm going to, I'm going to lock this off now. Yeah, so dead simple. Couple of wraps around it. Brilliant. There's no way that is coming off this now. Yeah, can't be pulled off the top, can't be twisted around and wound off. It's solid through that hole. That's brilliant. So that's going to do. So now we're going to put this in place. And the trick is to take your time setting these and get them right in the right locations. So if we've got a run, a rabbit run through these ferns here, yeah, and I'm going to want my steak. I mean, naturally, I've got a run here. So there's a natural funnel into it. So I'm going to put my stake at the side of it and I'm going to knock this in so it's nice and secure. So I'm going to knock that in nice and secure. I want me, me noose. I want it about six and a half inches tall, maybe seven and a half inches wide. Rabbits tend to run with their ears up. So they're, so they're quite, even though they're a small animal, they run quite upright. So you don't want your trap too close to the ground. I want it about about six inch off the ground as well. So, it's, so I'm happy with, the, with that snare. Now the main thing for me now is to guide the animals into here. So I've got it. It is a game trail, so I know that they're coming along this way. But I want to make sure they don't go either side of that. So what I want to do is fill the gaps either side and make a natural funnel that's going to send them straight down the middle where that noose is and that's going to give me the best chance of catching my supper so for that rabbit or that her coming down here now we know we're funneling it into this noose yeah we've blocked up that side we've blocked up that side we've put a little stick across the bottom as well to push it up into that noose as well and like i say they're generally quite upright so it's going to come straight through here yeah and that's once it gets stuck up and it's going to carry on running and it'll tighten up on it 
and we've got it and we've got a good strong fastening here where it's not going to get away that's a dead simple noose snare setup now we can really easily convert this to a spring snare so in a situation where you potentially got wild animals taking your rabbits oh bit of smoke keep the midges away anyway but for an area where you potentially got wild animals taking your rabbits yep your game you can make this into a spring snare so it projects the caught animal into the air out of the way from those predators on the ground all we have to do we're going to split this we're going to make a number seven notch on this one and a number seven notch on the stake at the bottom and we're going to fasten another cord to here which is going to go to our engine which is going to lift it in the air i'll show you all right so let's cut this i'm going to put a number seven notch here and another seven notch there Seven notch here. Yeah, one there. One on there. So we'll simply cut them out into seven notches. one make them quite long so you've got enough for the uh, the other notch to sit in it they work like that yep so you don't want them too deep anyway because you want it quite sensitive so i'm just going to tie an arbor knot around uh, around the top of this so i'm basically just tying my cordage around this i could have drilled another hole through it if i wanted but i'll do it a slight different way so as long as it's secure and it's not going to come off that's the main thing but an arbor knot or a clovich finished off with a stopper knot are ideal so there so we've got a nice little arbor knot on there yeah so this is going to be my eye trigger mechanism yeah we've just converted it from that other one so now we need to fasten this bit to the engine so again same as before, so we've got the game trail coming through here, I've got my engine in the form of a springy sapling, yep, yeah, and I want it above, so that's going to be above my snare, so I'm going to knock, that's my stake going into the ground, make that pretty long because you want it again, you want it secure, I mean this is not going to hold the animal but it's going to be under torque from the, from the uh, engine above it. And then we've got our other number seven notch, which is going to locate under that one there. So I need to fasten this end to the engine above it. So any knot you want, an arbor knot, anything clove, it's tied off. It's just as long as it's not going to come undone. Right, so we're sorted there. Number seven, number seven notch comes down. We're going to locate that in. Yep. Always remembering to watch out for this shooting up because last thing you want to do is it whip up and take your eye out. Set your noose. To the same height as before yep six inch off the ground six inch six and a half inch deep seven and a half inch wide something like that again we'll cover the sides to funnel any animals in and we've got we're set up there now this is this will lift the animal the prey up into the air away from any predators so to set that off now again the same script your animal comes through Funnel it into this location as it tightens up on that noose and then it'll lift it into the air and away from the ground. And it's up in the air, off the ground. It's also under under tension straight away. That noose 
it's, it's wound up straight away to full torque so it's going to put the animal out of its misery pretty quick and you can set that so it lifts it right up in the air yeah you could have that springing up six foot in the air well thanks for watching and uh, fingers crossed I get to practice these traps and these still in the wilderness for real catch you real soon